What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. On today's video, we're back to work on our cantilever air ride front suspension for our hookers and blow build. And in this one, this is going to be part two of that process. And I want to go in depth with you guys on what it takes to be able to set all these brackets up and get them to where they're ready to weld. And then how to weld them out and then how to finish them all off to where they look really nice when they're all said and done. So we're going to cover all that. We're also going to cover like the bushings and stuff that I'm using in there and everything. All right, so you guys seen me make these pieces in the last part and you can see it's got a pretty nice finish to it. Everything looks really good. I'm really happy with the way all of that turned out. And I wanna be able to show you guys how to get those same results when you guys are welding up some stuff so that it don't look all janky when you're all said and done. So the first step is going to be to know your pieces. So to begin with, I've got three different pieces right here and there's three different pieces here that I've designed because these two are inside pieces and this piece is an outside piece. There's no, one more piece that looks like this for the other uh, lower arm. But this one is an outside one because it has all of the holes in it. These inside ones are missing a hole here and here because they get tabs welded on for our pan hard bar to mount to. And I don't want a hole there to weaken the arm right in that location. So. I've left those holes out and that makes it to where we have to be very careful when we're putting this all together that we get these orientated in the right spot. Otherwise, I'll be cutting all this stuff apart or probably just starting over because there's probably no sense in even trying to start over again with these pieces. All right, so after figuring out the orientation of the parts and knowing which ones I'm using for sure, then I can begin by actually bolting them together because I have a hole here and I also have a sleeve that came with our bushing halves more about this here in a little while, but I can use these parts to actually bolt it together and we can begin to know exactly how to set everything up. Now, do yourself a favor, add a washer or something in there to give yourself a little bit of a shim, give you a few thousands extra in there because you don't want this stuff to be hammered on with an impact wrench and then be the exact size you need it to be because you're gonna fight it down the road to be able to put it all together. So, we'll put that on there. Tighten this up and we'll go to the next part. All right, that starts us out getting this thing pretty well aligned with each other right off the bat and it's not gonna go anywhere because we've got it good and tight on that end. So we can take this plate that's gonna go on the end of it on this side if we get it tacked on there, that's going to help keep everything squashed together. And then we can start laying the top plate on and the bottom plate on. So this end plate is actually the same width as this top plate and also the bottom plate. So when I wanna put it on, I wanna line up just like I wanna do the rest of the plates. And the spot that I wanna do that to line them all up is something just like that. I basically wanna line up the inside corner and then that leaves a nice beveled area out here on the end to fill up with weld give us plenty of strength even after we grind off the edge. So let me tack this on, I'll get you a little closer view so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so hopefully you guys can see now, I think you should be able to, how there's a nice beveled out spot there to be able to weld. So when I go to weld all of that, we'll fill all of that in completely. And then when we go to grind it, we won't be taking off hardly any material left at all. It'll mostly all be right down there in that bubble. All right, so that makes that whole thing pretty rigid now. We're actually to the point we're ready to start plating the top and the bottom. I am going to do this side first because it kind of has a roll in it this direction. I've found that it's a little easier to pull something together and get it going on there that way than it is to try to pry it up. So. I want to have that piece on first to make it a little bit more stable when I'm prying on the other side. So this is actually the bottom with that roll in it. So this plate is going to be our bottom plate. I'm going to start it basically the exact same way as I did the other stuff. Just lining up right there on the edge. About like that. Tack her on. 
and line it up again in another spot and move on down the way. You guys can kind of see there. Same scenario. We've got our little place there to fill in. Now, as we go down the side, you guys can kind of see that it has a gap here, of course. So as it goes down, I need to push on this. I don't want to push on it too much just yet because I'll break those tacks. But we've got it right now lined up where we can come in here about an inch or so in and go ahead and get another tack on it. now that's got enough of attack I can actually start pushing and I'll just push it down to where the next section is kind of lined up put my arm on there and call her good One of the other points I can uh, kind of help you guys with is keep your tacks kind of in line with each other, especially when you got holes and stuff in it like this because they will kind of start to bend at each tack and if you've got them offset from each other it kind of looks weird later down the line. So I'm going to continue just pushing this down and tacking as I go all the way down the piece and I'll show you what that looks like when that's all done. All right, got her all welded up, still got her nice little bevel all the way around the edge there all the way around it so that'll be good for when we do the final weld on that but before I do I need to go ahead and put the bottom piece on before I put the bottom piece on I want to throw a few welds on the inside here just to be hundred percent sure that there's not gonna be any problems down the line then we'll go ahead and tack our last piece on just like we did on the other side we just have a little bit here to push down to be able to make it all line up All right, got it all tacked down. Once again, still got a nice bevel all the way around, so we're good there, and I am ready to actually start welding this. I am only gonna do a couple of inches at a time, and I'm gonna skip around as I'm doing it, and I'm gonna do that because there's a lot of welds in this little part, and I don't wanna warp it all up. All right, got it all ground down and it's looking pretty decent and a lot of people will just be tempted to go ahead and now round this edge off. Trust me on this one, you are going to want to fill in some spots like this. It makes a world of difference in the end on the way this thing looks. Yes, it takes a little bit more time, but then you're not chasing a deep spot like this and screwing up the way the whole appearance is along that edge when you're grinding it all out. So. One more step of welding on that and then grind everything down square again, then we can round that edge off.
All right, these are looking pretty sweet. I'm liking the way that finish came out. I did hit all of this to begin with with a 60 grit flap wheel on the grinder. The last go around, I hit it with 120 grit. So it just kind of helps take out some of the extra scratches and stuff. And then that helps with rounding this edge off too a little bit because you don't have as an aggressive of a wheel taking off so much metal. So that helps finish all that off really nice. We've got one more thing left to do here on the end of it. And that is to put a bung in the end of it so that we can put a rod end on there. The rod end is adjustable. It's got threads on it so you can screw it in and out and that will allow us to actually have a little bit of adjustment here in the front end so we got to put that in there and then next after that i've got one more sleeve to put in here on the bottom side right there in that bracket and then we can mount this thing on there and we'll be ready to move on to making some brackets for the axle all right, fast forward a couple days and I've got those lower arms done now, both of those. And I've also got that front axle done. It's all the same scenario as what the arms were. The axle just has a plate here and a plate here on each side. And then I welded those plates to the axle tube. And then I mounted this onto there and just kind of formed it over the top as well. It's got a little bit of shape to it too. I'm just trying to show you guys. Hopefully you can see that. It's got some shape to it too, so it's not just a straight up and down piece. We try to give it a little bit of flair with just a slight curve to it so you can tell that it's not just a piece of square tubing hacked off and welded on there or something. So got that part done anyways. Don't look at that, you don't see that yet. We'll talk about that on another day. And I have moved on. I've got the frame flipped upside down now because I started drilling holes in here to be able to mount our airbags to the chassis. Uh, let me set the camera down. I'll kind of show you what's up with that. Okay, so this is what we're doing with with the bag. The bag has got one hole in the end of it right there for mounting it on the bottom. And on the top, it's got two holes in it right there where those two bolts are at. And then, of course, you've got the airline going through there. So I'll make a plate for the top. i also make a plate for the bottom. This one on the bottom, I've got extra holes in it there so I can plug weld there and there. So I can plug weld into the frame of the truck and then... I've got this little piece here that actually tells me exactly where it's going to be located at that point. It fits in here and it just goes right up against that bracket. And then there's absolutely no way that that can be in the wrong spot. So that's what I've got going on there. So in Old Crow, I drilled a hole similar to this in the chassis. And then I just welded this nut or the head of that bolt to the bottom of this plate and then just sit it down on top of there. And then I was done and I just ran the bag down onto the bolt. Gotta be honest with you, that wasn't my best um, idea that I've had. That was actually a little bit of pain in the rear because even though I had everything all set to begin with to where you could run right down and it would be good, by the time everything got welded and all that kind of stuff, I had to actually grind quite a little bit to be able to get it to where it would actually turn on and clock in the right position. So, I'm going back to putting a bolt all the way through the chassis, but I don't want to go all the way through from top to bottom. I'm actually just going to put a hole in here. I cut these sleeves and I'm going to make a hole in there big enough to where I can sit these right down into the chassis and go all the way to the other side of the square tubing. And that will give me a spot big enough to actually get a socket in and get a bolt in so that this bolt that's going into the bottom of the bag is just a small little bolt. It's not trying to collapse the tube work of the chassis here. And like I said, that'll give me enough room by the time it's all said and done to be able to get a socket right up in there and just feed it right in. So that should work out pretty good like that, but I've got to get a hole big enough in there now for that to get in there. Then once I got the hole in there, I'm going to weld that all up. So there won't be anything getting down inside of our frame rails keeps all the trash out with this in there and that's also going to give us our strength back from having a hole so on to drilling
sweet, we're almost to the point where we can watch this thing go up and down, but I am a couple bolts short, so I sent Connor to go get those so that we can hook all this stuff up, and I thought this would be a perfect time for me to show you guys the bushings that I'm using in here. These are an energy suspension. Um, I don't know the number. I'll put the number for them down in the description below. I'll also put a link down there for them for you guys if you want to go buy some. And what you get with those, with this kit, is you get four of these bushing halves. Each half will slide in from one side and the other inside of a piece of tube. I get this particular size because the tube that I have here in the shop is inch and three quarter 120 wall. I use that quite a bit for roll cage stuff. So I can just cut a piece of that off. It's just a drop on the floor or whatever. I can cut a little section out, make it to where it fits in between the little ribs here on these bushings, slide the bushings in. And then it also comes with two of these, one for each side, so, or one for each set. You slide that sleeve in right there into the bushings. And then once that's in your piece of metal, you're able to weld to that tube, just like you've seen here. And then you're able to bolt something here and you're good to go. So these things are pretty rigid. I really like them. I've used them quite a bit and I would definitely recommend using those. So there you go. That's what we used there for the bushings on, let's see, the material that I've used here for the metal, that's all 3 16 The rod ends down here in the bottom are a chromoly rod end. They are a three quarter inch shank down here at the base of them, but the hole in them is actually a five eighths. And I've also got, I just got the, I've got cone bushings that will line up and space off the rod end. These will go in there, one on each side of the rod end. They're for misalignment spacers, and those will actually allow it to have a little bit more articulation and stuff in the front end. So I've got those that'll go in here once Connor gets back with the bolts. And let's see, I think I've pretty well caught you guys up on everything. The airbags, the airbags are a 2,600 pound airbag. I do not remember now where I got them, but I will try to find you guys a link for those as well. And I'll try to put a link to all of this stuff that I can in the description down below for you guys so you can go find it there so i guess we'll let him get back and we'll get this stuff bolted in about an inch and a half on each side just barely hanging on most of the tires hanging off the table but we are gonna be able to actually throw some air to this thing and see what we get out of it for lift did think of one more question that I get asked quite a bit and that is what's the length of the arms and how do you come up with all that measurement and stuff we'd have to go into a whole nother video if you want me to try to explain to you that because this one's already getting pretty long and I don't want to do that for you guys, but I will give you guys the measurements real quick. And then maybe on another video, we'll go over how you can figure all that out. But this center bolt to the front bolt right there on these particular set of arms is 17 inches. And then from the center bolt back to the center of the bag, we're looking at five and a half inches. So those are the numbers on this set of arms here. So that gives you guys kind of an idea on some of that. So now we can actually put some air to this thing and lift it up. But before we do that, I want to do another shout out to a deserving YouTube channel. This is a guy that I just met this week here locally, and he's a pretty inspiring dude. He's got a pretty neat channel over at Lemon Fab. I'll put you guys up a link to that down in the description below too, so you guys can go over and check him out. He's in a wheelchair, but he's still building stuff. He's out in the shop all the time, working hard, and I don't know how you can get any more expiring than that. So that's pretty awesome. Go over and check him out. Give him some love. Give him some support. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the likes. Hit the subscribe. All that stuff. You guys know the drill. So. Go over there and check him out. So, all right, let's throw some air to this thing, lift it up, and see what we got. All right, so for some lines there, this thing up, I just went to the local hardware store, got some of this white plastic stuff. I got a T, I got some fittings to put a ball valve on there. Close the valve before you hook into the air line. 
Just using an airline straight from my shop compressor and you can crack the valve open real nice and easy and air it up. I'd probably go a little bit higher than that even if I wanted it to, but I think that's plenty high enough. Just to give you guys an idea, this is a regular pop can. I think those are five inches and we're what, three inches, maybe almost four inches over the top of that. So plenty of height there underneath the belly of the thing. So we'll be only riding at right height, just about the can or just even a little bit lower might be probably about the can, that'll be right height. So anyways, let's dump the bag and watch it go down. Sweet. Nothing else, at least we made a can crusher. Well guys, I guess that's all I got for you today on this one. Go check out some of the other videos. I'll put you guys a link to that stuff up here and I guess we'll see you on the next one. Oh, I did not crush the can. It was supposed to crush the can. I guess I didn't set it underneath there evenly. Oh, almost crushed the can. I'm out of cans. Damn it. <laughs>